Welcome to the fourth episode of Debugging TV Frames program. You can type your questions during this episode. If I can't answer particular questions now, I then post answers on the website debugging.tv. And I also want to apologize for the, la uh, for the last fold with uh, this uh, frame episode. So today we record it as well. During this episode, I'll improvise and show you various techniques and commands. And uh, I quickly discuss some topics such as on this list about invasive and non-invasive debugging, suspended threads, stack trace and symbols, thread environment block and raw stack, breakpoints, detaching and attaching, breaking in, saving dump files and creating cup files. And I also demonstrate the usage of some commands that are shown on this slide. So let's start. I have an application running called test Windows Air Reporting 64 bit. So what I do, I already have a debugger running. So I attach it to this process non-invasively so what I do I show you that there is one thread for this process 16B0 so, we also see suspend count 1, so the thread was suspended. So let's do, let's list the stack trace. We see uh, that it shows some strange functions we don't see on uh, normal stack traces. So we probably forgot to apply to load and apply symbols. Reload symbols, so we do simfix and uh, what we probably need to do, we probably need to find if there are any symbols for this application. So I think they are here. PDB file, so we remember this path. And we add symbols as well and then reload. So now stack trace should be much better. So because we attached, we also see that this application we can't switch to it. So it's suspended. So we resume. There is command to resume the current thread. So we see now that we can switch to this application and do what we want. Move window, show about, and so on. So if you want, we can for example, do something and then we can suspend the current thread. You see now we can switch to this application. So what we do now, we remember this is the process ID. So then we detach no target and now we attach to that process ID you see it's running so we attach to that process ID so 
So, and we do go. Okay. So we see the program is suspended. So we list our threads. Now we see two threads. The first thread is debugger thread that did a breakpoint, a mode breaking, and um, we need to switch to the first thread, which is our application thread. And um, we actually, what we do, we first we resume our application, right? And then we do a bit of work, for example, launch about dialog box, then dismiss it, and then we switch to debugger and do break. Then we inspect raw stack data. Raw stack data. We specify stack region addresses. And uh, you know, look and search for something interesting where we can put a breakpoint. Actually, the own thread. So we need to switch to our main thread and repeat that again. And search for something interesting. There are more uh, execution residue on this raw stack. So we find, for example, that So we resume now and uh, display about dialog box. And now we switch to our debugger back again and uh, switch to our main thread and we see the stack trace. And then we look at execution residue again. And this time, if we look at it, we find, for example, that, you know, this function was called. See, about dialog. Uh, this application was written using Microsoft Foundation classes. So what we want to do, we want to put a breakpoint on this function. And BL lists breakpoints. And now we resume, switch to our application, dismiss dialog box. And next time we call it, breakpoint should be hit. And indeed that happened. So it was hit just right with this function. So stack trace now shows how it was called. So what you want to do, you want to save a crash dump at this point, for example. So we use the command to dump slash ma to save everything. And we specify path. For example, let's 
for example, like this path. So the dump was written and we, what we do, we detach. So what is useful sometimes is not only we want to save a dump, but we also want to save a dump with all symbols. That is useful if you want to send this dump uh, for offline remote uh, memory dump analysis and uh, you want also uh, send uh, all necessary symbol files from uh, the system, from your system. So there is another command, it's open dump, go to open dump and then you specify the path uh, to the dump. So, um, what was that test? So, you see also prompt changed. After opening the dump, you need to do go. So, you see, you have exceptions stored, you see uh, registers, and uh, you can view stack trace. Actually, if you list modules, you see that only uh, uh, that symbols were uh, loaded and applied only for these modules. All other modules were uh, symbols for all other modules were deferred, so they were not loaded because no references uh, were found. So what you want to do, for example, however, if we uh, execute some command, like we try to uh, dump Rostec data, we might see more uh, symbol files loaded. Let's check that. So it takes some time. Hope it finishes soon. Yeah, it finishes. So let's see. We see more modules, uh, more symbol files loaded, but still there are some uh, deferred modules. So uh, what we want to do, we want to load all symbol files. So we use sim opt option. So So let's wait. Some missing symbol files were loaded. And now you see the lm command shows all possible modules loaded. And uh, what we see now also, what we do, we can now use dump cub command. Actually, let's check if there is there are any parameters to it. Yes, so dump cub a parameter causes all symbol files saved. And then we specify full path. And we see that now the current dump file has been added. And then you would see all symbols added to a cat file.
take some time. You see symbols have been added to cap file one by one, including symbols from uh, test window cell reporting program as well. So uh, if you look at the folder, we would see dump file and cup file as well. In the open cup file we see everything is there. So uh, this is all for this episode. Thank you for watching this uh, exercise, this improvisation. Please later check out the slides and recorded video from debugging.tv. I also put a log file for download. Uh, so the next episode is scheduled for uh, the next Friday. I think this should be 2nd of uh, December. Uh, so see you next time. Thank you for attending. Okay, there is also a question from uh, one question. What is better, uh, dot sim opt minus four or reload slash f? I think uh, reload. I usually use a uh, dot reload uh, slash f to force uh, reloading uh, of uh, mismatched PDB files because sim opt. I believe sim opt minus four will only load files that are matched. But if you still have uh, unmatched uh, PDB files, then uh, SimOpt will not help. There is also another option, SimOpt. Uh, you can check uh, in the uh, WinDBG help uh, that allows you to load to ignore any uh, date or timestamp uh, mismatch between uh, modules uh, in memory dumps and uh, PDB files and uh, load everything. So you can check that uh, in the help. So I basically use SimOpt-4 is just to load all PDB files that uh, can be matched successfully against modules in a uh, memory dump. And again I repeat dot reload uh, forced reload uh, slash f dot reload slash f is useful uh, when you need to um, do force reload of mismatched PDB files. I think I covered that in the previous episodes. So thank you very much for your questions. If you have any questions, you can uh, type them. And uh, I later add them and my answers to uh, questions and answers page for this episode.